Hi, my name is Elena Broca. I'm your host for today's segment of Our Ventura. Our guest today is Mario Robinson, Youth Program Supervisor for the City of Ventura. Hi, Mario. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. Oh, well, me too. I'm so excited to hear all about what you do. So, Youth Program Supervisor, tell us a little bit about what that means. It sounds like a fun job. It is. It's a really fun job. I was very fortunate 10 years ago to get a job with the City of Ventura. I do youth programs primarily with low-income youth. Um, I work with 6- to 17-year-olds. It's a great job. I get to see them grow up uh, at a young age and become young adults. And we do great programs for families and pr provide a lot of opportunities for kids for with leadership development and recreation enrichment and sports leagues, and it's a great program. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So let's get into a little bit of that. Sure. So leadership development. Tell us about some of the programs that you do. Do you start leadership development when they're six, or do you wait until they're a little older? Wait until they're a little bit older. Uh, we have a high school leadership program called Teen Voice. We've always primarily worked with elementary and middle schools, so in 2008 we wanted to to start a program working with high school students and it gives us an opportunity to work with them on leadership development, uh, career path, we do internships, job opportunities and they get to do projects in the community which have been great. So can you tell us some about uh, some of those projects that they've done? Yeah, we do, every year we do the Thanksgiving baskets where we feed 100 families a complete Thanksgiving meal. High school students fundraise, get all the volunteer, all the supplies in, they do it all. And we ask the Title I schools, which are schools that are on probation, if you say, for not meeting test scores. So those are the families that we have the principals choose, and we provide dinners for those families during the Thanksgiving time. And 100 families. 100 families. You do every year. Every now, year. Now, somebody watching this, if they wanted to get in on that, could they help? Could they be a part of that program? Oh, that would be great. We always look for items to be donated, uh, volunteers, if you want to come down and see the families and pass out the food. It's, it's a great opportunity. It's really life-changing for our students to be able to help local families in Ventura. So if I wanted to make a pie, could you, I give you a pie? You could. Probably you 100 pies pie. would be 100 better. 100 pies though. would be better. Okay. 100 turkeys, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't make turkeys. I only make pies. So what are some of the other programs that the leadership kids do? Well, we have our, our leadership kids. We do the Teens for Jeans. Uh -huh. uh, we provide new and used jeans for the homeless population. Uh, it's kind of a two-part program. Teens for Jeans started in this last year. We started the Homeless Essential Needs Project where everyday items that we always have, deodorant, mm -hmm. soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, homeless population don't always think about those things. They're looking for shelter, feeding their animals and we're able to give them 14 items in a Ziploc bag of things that we have every day. So we do the Teens for Jeans and then the Homeless Essential Needs items and it's a great two-part partnership with our homeless population. That is so great. It sounds like it's about letting kids know about things that are outside of their comfort zone, pe things that people need that they maybe right. take for granted, and then giving them the tools to actually make a difference in people's lives. It's great because when they get a chance to go to deliver those products to the homeless shelters, it's great. They're s excited to see the families there. Uh, there's a lot of teens their own age that are homeless, mm -hmm. and I think it's eye-opening for them to say, wow, look how fortunate I am to have all these great things. So let's talk about some of the programs that you do for younger kids. We have the PEAK program. PEAK started in 2002, which is program enrichment for after school kids. It's a great opportunity for the city to work with our low income population. You know, we always did fee based programs, but never had an opportunity to work with the low income population and provide programs. In 2002, we started PEAK. It's a partnership with the Ventura Unified School District and our Police Activities League. We serve seven Title I schools and about 500 kids every day. Uh, that's amazing. 500 yes, kids. 500 kids. Throughout the school year. Throughout the school year. So what, I, what does a peak kid get? For peak, you know, I think it's real important for a peak kid and a family to know that you have a safe program on campus. You don't have to go anywhere else. You can go right to your program there. Um, it's no cost to the parents because of the partnership and the grants we've been able to get. It's free for those parents. So that's a huge cost when you're you know, a single parent or a hardworking family looking for after school care. And for the kids, they get homework development, they get academics for an hour, they get a nutritional snack, 
They get enrichment activities. We have climbing walls, swim lessons. I mean, they really get a great opportunity to be a kid, but also have staff that are great role models and a great program. That's fantastic. So in those in that environment, because I've been to some of the peak mm -hmm. sites and I've seen kids doing ceramics yes. and singing and mm -hmm. a lot of arts stuff too, right. which we know isn't in the school day anymore. Exactly. So that's a part of their program as yes, well? Yes, we do dance, we do ceramics, we do swim. We have uh, just a variety of art teachers that come in. It, it's a great opportunity for them. They love it. You know, the most important thing for a parent is they want their homework done. So we always do an hour of academics, and that's the most important for a parent. But we know the kid, besides getting their homework done, needs some recreation and enrichment activities, and that's what we do. So one of the things that you said about that program struck me. You talked about the school district and the police activities league, right. PAL. So it sounds like that program is a three, sort of a tri-partnership. I don't know if that's the word, but it's, it, right. it wouldn't happen without those two other agencies, I would imagine. No, we have a private uh, foundation that has given us dollars that wants to remain private, but they've uh, given the money to the school district, and the school district partnered with the city and PAL to provide uh, the programming part of it. That's so great. That's great. So tell me a little bit about what the P Police Activities League does, because I know that it supports right. a lot of the youth mm -hmm. programs. That's part of my duties with the city. I'm also the executive director for PAL. Oh. And it's great. PAL gives us uh, the funding and police support that we need for youth. There's a lot of youth nowadays that we're trying to make sure that they understand that they can be friends with police, mm -hmm. they can respect the police, and the police are there to support them. Mm -hmm. So that's real important. Uh, PAL gives us $74,000 a year wow. to help run programs. That's from uh, buying uniforms and sports leagues to helping us fund our rec mobile, recreation mobile program, our climbing wall, martial arts. So they do a great job in supporting us and we really appreciate having officer support. It's real important. So I know that one of the other things that you oversee is the West Park Community Center, which is really a, a youth center. Right. My, what I know is that it's the only community center that the city of Ventura has, right. and it's on the West End. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about what the programs are that are out there? No, West Park is like our little gym in the city. You know, that's a great opportunity for our kids. Um, West Park serves 6 to 17-year-olds. It's an opportunity for our youth to have a safe place to go after school. And West Park, if you haven't been there in such a long time, it's changed, you know, because of our collaboration and grants that we've been able to get we've been able to redesign the inside of it and make it more accessible for kids they have great programs we have computer labs basketball gym through art programs I mean we have it there and it's it's been great for the kids so you keep you, you've said a couple times six to seventeen year olds yes um, why don't you serve kids that are younger than six Difficult uh, for us in the fact that potty train, you know, our staff aren't, you know, um, equipped for the potty train. And for I have a one-year-old. Are you I know, I know. He's not going to be potty trained until he's six? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know, that seems like a lot of time. We are starting to go a little bit younger than six because a lot of the kids that are four and five are advanced right now. Right. So we provide a bitty basketball program and a bitty soccer program where we take the pre-K and we start them off kind to uh, get them incorporated into our programs that way. So a we bitty are, program. We have a that's so great. So we're starting a little bit younger uh, to get them involved. And we want to teach them early that, you know, the West Park and all of our programs are there for the community. All are welcome to come. Uh, teach them our values of what we want. Sportsmanship is number one key. So if we get them young, then they start to uh, understand what we're looking for. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of what you're doing mm -hmm. in the youth programs is um, focusing on younger people yes. and focusing on teaching them about uh, things that they just might not learn about in their everyday life and then giving them the tools to um, to encourage healthy behavior. Is that sort of part Very of much your so. Focus? I mean, nowadays physical fitness, healthy behaviors, um, how to work with adults, how to, you know, I think work with the police is very important. So just giving them those tools that they need to be very productive, good citizens mm -hmm. and understand that work working hard does pay off in the end. Mm -hmm. And I think that everything that you've talked about, I'm just getting, is free. Is yes. that right? It's free. Uh, the fortunate thing for us is we work in low-income uh, families and uh, through the city's general fund help and through grants and through POW and school district, it's everyone coming together to provide 
uh, great quality programs for our kids that can afford to pay more expensive, you know, things for activities. So it's been good. So it does really sound like a great job, youth program supervisor. Um, I know that you spend a lot of time at your desk, like, you know, working things behind the scenes, but right. can you just tell us about a highlight that you've had in your career here at the city where you've seen a kid that you've really been able to make a difference in their life? I mean, quite a few. I mean, you know, with the Teen Voice program, it's been nice because a lot of the kids we see at the community center, now I'm getting them to be in our leadership program and to see them kind of, uh, you know, it's like Jackie, for example, I won't give her last name, but you know, when we first got Jackie as a young kid, very shy, very, um, always wore a hood, didn't want to ever speak, didn't want to do anything. She was just really shy. And we got her involved in a lot of programs as she grew up. And when she got into Teen Voice, and you can ask Judy, my supervisor, this, that she, her, her attitude has changed, her personality, she's just blossomed so much because she needed that extra support that she wasn't getting maybe at home. And really, she's at Cal State Channel Islands now. We never thought she'd probably go to college. You know, she was so shy, but she's been a great kid and a great success story for us because we got her young and we were able to help her develop her leadership skills and her confidence, and she's changed so much. That is so great. And it's so interesting mm -hmm. that you called it teen voice, because mm -hmm. what you're describing is giving a kid a voice. A voice in the And community. making them feel heard. That's right. And teaching them self-confidence, too. Yes. It sounds like that's a lot of, of what you do. Self-esteem, self-confidence, it's giving them those tools, because you know they have to be able to communicate in the world, and, and, and that gives them an opportunity to, to be successful. Yeah. So if you had a magic wand and you could do any new youth um, programs here in the city of Ventura, what do you think we could really benefit from? I think just continuing to provide uh, students with opportunities for physical fitness, healthy eating and nutrition. Obesity is a big thing mm -hmm. on, you know, in our community and on the west side and providing healthy options for them. A lot of times the food that we have to serve, we have to always start thinking healthy options for them. So I think health and nutrition would be great and making sure that kids know they have options for recreation, an opportunity to play in sports league. For example, West Park Community Center only charges $20 for a sports league. And that's with a full uniform for soccer or a t-shirt for basketball. So we keep it very affordable so that parents have options to get involved. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yes. And are there, um, when you have a kid in, in one of these programs, mm -hmm. Peak or Teen Voice, et cetera, is there an opportunity for the parents to get together and, and be with other parents? And is yes. there a community place, a community gathering space for those participants? Yeah, West Park, I mean, as much as we're six to 17 year olds, we know that their parents come along with yeah. them to a lot of their activities. So we encourage parents to coach. We have a lot of parents who are volunteer coaches. Uh, part of a team. Uh, they have team moms. They help with around the facilities. So we're very supportive of making sure that not only are we taking care of the child, but we're providing opportunities for the families to get those same support and backing. So what would you tell um, as advice to somebody we're close to wrapping up here? Mm -hmm. Who wants to get into your line of work? How would you help them? Because it really does sound like right. a great job. A lot of us uh, start off as recreation leaders, support staff. Uh, it's great to have, uh, believe it or not, my Teen Voice kids, out of 35 kids, 12 of them currently work for us. So it's a great opportunity to start young, learning how to work with kids, understanding how important it is to um, help kids grow and be successful. So if you start young in our field, and a lot of times, a lot of people start off as support staff and then become go to college and they come back and work for us again. So great opportunities to be in recreation. Well, I, thank you so much for everything yeah. that you do. It's really exciting. So if there is somebody at home who really does want to make 100 pies for the Thanksgiving <laughs> baskets or something else, get involved in any way, right. how can they get in touch with you? There's always my phone number. They can always call 654-7807, and that goes directly to my line, and I'll be willing to speak with them for their extra support. You know, kids and families always need something. So we be able to help them uh, give back and also they can go to the City of Ventura Parks and Recreation website and look up all of our programs and my numbers there and there's always ways to get a hold of us. Great. And you're always open for volunteers yes. and people who want to come in and just talk to the kids maybe. Yes. Even. Yes. They look for guest speakers to come in. Great. Well, Mario, thank you so thank much you. for everything you do for thank our you. youth here in the city of Ventura. We're really thankful to you. And thank you for being here today. You've thank been a you great guest. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. My name is Elena Brokaw, and this has been Our Ventura. Thank you for watching.